I'm joined now by Bill Bouquet, who is a political commentator. Bill, look, I, I just think that we, we are governed now by a group of people who are liars, uh, uh, arrogant, cheat, uh, and, and don't have an interest in the real people because they have a rule for us that they don't take notice of themselves. Your view. Yeah, good evening. I, I think it's very much the case. I think what we've seen over the last two years with some of the you know most draconian rules that we've ever seen um, imposed in this democratic island um, is degrading trust in all of our key institutions. You look at the prime minister... Uh, and support for him, obviously, is at an all-time low. Support from politicians has consistently been declining in various different polls during the pandemic. And there's also questions over the conduct of other institutions who are basically there to kind of protect us and seek within our wider interests. Um, so it, 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 I think this country is suffering from somewhat of a democratic deficit and rightly so, voters are angry, they're apathetic, uh, and they're looking, hopefully, with Dan Rose seemingly uh, going to be uh, dropped by the end of this month, a month earlier than usual, um, that they hope that normality or some form of normality can resume and that trust within our key institutions can be preserved. And what, and what do we say to the people of Northern Ireland who have observed the lockdown, who have observed the wearing masks, who have observed the closures of schools and shopping centres, all sorts of businesses, when the Deputy First Minister has completely ignored them. What do we say to the people of Wales when their First Minister uh, has argued for a lockdown, argued for social distancing, when he was partying at a Diwali celebration? What do we say to the people of Scotland when their First Minister was not wearing a mask, when she herself passed legislation to wear a mask? And what do we say to the people of England when they weren't able to go to funerals and, uh, and see their own family at the same time as the people who made the rules were drinking champagne and eating brie? Ultimately, it's about setting by example. And I feel if you're going to be introducing measures which are going to destroy businesses, you know, degrade people's mental health, uh, to put a further strain on the health service, then you've got to at least show that you're yourself are willing to do so. Because if in the minds of voters, if they see that elected representatives aren't doing uh, what they impose, then then why should anyone else? And I feel we're getting to a moment of time where people are wanting to return to normal. There's a lot of talk about uh, retracting the, the concept of a pandemic and more towards an endemic. Uh, and we're seeing that a lot within wider society. And I, I think it's great to see um, you know, I'm in London at the moment, I've spent the day here and it's absolutely thriving. Uh, which hasn't just been the case for the last two years. And if you take, for instance, to the Khan, um, the Mayor of London still enforcing mandatory face coverings on TFL services like the underground, but they're not really seeing anyone wear it because they understand, one, politicians have consistently broken the rules themselves, Boris Johnson, Nicola Sturgeon, other politicians as well. But they know the fact that we're at an end point where there are much more crucial and pertinent issues that need to be addressed other than the pandemic, which is, is beyond our reach now. Yeah, look, I mean, I don't... Here's the thing I don't get, and I'm just going to ask you genuinely, Bill. Look, I genuinely hate lockdowns. I genuinely hate mandatory vaccines. I genuinely hate closures of schools. I, and, and believe me, uh, being able, unable to see my mother in the last few months of my, her life, I really hate that, as you might imagine. But Boris Johnson is a giant hypocrite. Whereas Keir Starmer genuinely wants these restrictions to go on forever. What, what is the best option? Support the hypocrite or support the believer? I mean, ultimately, voters are there to hold politicians to account, especially Boris Johnson, because he had the largest, one of the largest democratic mandates in recent history, the largest majority since, since Margaret Thatcher when he that astonishing 2019 election. And they want him to deliver. Obviously, the pandemic has scuppered his plans uh, with that. 
But I think ultimately that's what that's what voters do. And as we see with the prime minister right now, he is under immense pressure, not just over the Partygate scandal, uh, but also the Metropolitan Police investigation. And we saw that he's now received a questionnaire from the force themselves. They've also obtained, you know, over 300 photos, 500 documents, uh, you know, nearly 100 witnesses. Uh, and they know that the prime minister has two fronts here. He's having to defend essentially the indefensible around lockdown breaching parties during the pandemic in Downing Street and Whitehall. But also they're seeing that on the wider issues around policy, um, that's what's going to get the Conservative parties elected or re-elected or to preserve their majority come the next election because trusting the Conservative Party under Boris Johnson has been fractured. But if he can show that he's putting the pandemic behind him, he's apologetic of some sort and realising the wider task at hand around bouncing back from the pandemic, especially around the economy, um, then I think that's how we're going to have some semblance of returning to normality within our our political system. But, but, but Bill, what's the indefensible? Is the indefensible Boris Johnson ignoring the coronavirus lockdown or the fact that the coronavirus lockdown happened? I don't know. I mean, my instinct is to say, actually, Boris Johnson was right. It was wholly ridiculous to ban people from seeing each other. Wholly ridiculous for you to be able to uh, be unable to have a drink with a colleague. Wholly ridiculous to not be able to see your family. I mean, when, you know, when Dominic Cummings uh, tested his eyesight by driving to Durham, I thought to myself, you know, if it were true, and I'm not making an allegation of criminality, if it were true that he wasn't driving to Durham to test his eyesight, but was actually driving to Durham to visit his family, then he would be wholly morally justified. The problem is he's the guy who criminalised it. Indeed it is. And I think that's what I mean by the indefensible, and that is putting these lockdown measures in place, breaking them yourselves, and being responsible for your eyes, your spads, and potentially ministers also being involved. But also, in, in, in the most damning of circumstances, potentially misleading Parliament, when it, it in itself is a resignation matter. Um, and once that Metropolitan Police investigation has concluded and hopefully the full report of uh, Sue Gray's inquiry into into uh, illicit gatherings um, is finalised and published, uh, then, then that, that will be down to him essentially to uh, save his premiership in, in many ways. And, uh, and we can debate, I think, the debate around whether you know, lockdown actually benefited. It was up for debate. I think it benefited, you know, in, in in genuinely saving lives. But look at the impact it's had on the economy. Look at the impact it's had on the backlog in the health service. Look at the impact it's having on children's mental health or in lost education or regression. That's going to be a really big sticking point for, you know, decades to come around the coronavirus pandemic. So look, you know, you're a political expert, you know a lot about this. What what does the Conservative Party do next? So the reason I'm asking that is because the Labour Party are not in power, the Lib Dems are not in power, SNP not in power in the United Kingdom, and indeed uh, Plaid Cymru, uh, DUP, the rest of them. I just wonder whether the Conservative Party will ditch Boris Johnson or whether they'll galvanise and try and support him. What's your view? I think Boris Johnson throughout his career has been known as a gambler um, and he's a serial winner. Uh, look at Mayor of London, you know, winning Mayor, London Mayor contest twice in a you know, Labour-dominated city, Brexit, referendum, the 29th general election. But now Tory MPs are starting to question whether Boris Johnson is now becoming a political and electoral liability for the party. So, because what they'll have to think about, and there's already been... Uh, at least a dozen Tory MPs who have openly spoken about, uh, you know, sent a letter to the 1922 committee of backbench MPs, you know, withdrawing their support for the Prime Minister. But you've got to think longer term is that the timing around his departure, and I do think he will, you know, eventually have, any Prime Minister will be leaving office, but uh, they'll have to do it because they'll have to... Uh, 
integrate a new leader, they only a transition period, you know, in their role, potentially six months, if not a year, to kind of have their stance, you know, on several different policy issues and integrating into number 10 before then a general election, because the next general election is predicted to be around 2023 or in 2024. So if we look to maybe, I don't know, I think Tory MPs are very hesitant because they're waiting for the conclusion of this police investigation. But I think police investigation may be coinciding with the local council elections that we're having in a few months' time could be the trigger point to then bring in maybe a new Tory leader, settle them into the role, and hopefully they'll be able to deliver uh, as great of a majority as Boris Johnson did in 2019. Can, can I be a complete geek? There's a reason why you can't have the general election in May 2023, as you said. The reason is the new boundary changes don't come in until November 2023, and the Conservatives will call the election, and uh, obviously they won't want to call it on mm. the existing boundaries. Anyway, geek fact. But that's not my question. My question is, you said Boris Johnson might be a political and electoral liability. Is he a polit political and electoral liability in your view? It's an interesting question. Um, if you look uh, at the Conservative Party manifesto, uh, a recent report by the Institutes of Government showed that the Tories are on track or have delivered in some capacity, half of their manifesto commitment. So in that sense, the party is delivering, but it's other, there's other more pressing issues which will stick in both his minds. So for instance, on levelling up and the white paper and whether, whether that would genuinely bring you know, benefits to why the United Kingdom, particularly within Red Wall seats. But the Red Wall is, always has been very vulnerable um, because... Many of them lended their vote because they saw the Conservatives as the only viable party to bring Britain out of the European Union. But looking at how unpopular Boris Johnson is in the Tory membership, he's the second most unpopular minister only behind Mark Spencer. And also looking at consistent polls showing that Labour is ahead of the Conservative Party. Um, you've got to question whether Boris Johnson really is a political liability, but also you can't really tell until an election is called. And then from them, it's for people's judgments to think, is it to do with Boris Johnson? Is it maybe to do the, with the wider Conservative Party um, and their behaviour and all of this? Um, or are just voters becoming so apathetic um, within the wider system now, that Bill, they'll, they'll look for any alternative uh, that they can find? Now, Bill, uh, Nick in the gallery has a question, and his question is, which pub are you currently sat in? Oh, wait, sorry, say that again? Which pub are you currently sat in? You sat in a pub, we could hear it in the background. Listen, oh, I appreciate no, I'm, you. Uh, I'm, I'm near Farringdon Station. Oh, get out of it. He's in the kebab shop. Right, which, which he's in the kebab shop. Anyway, Bill, uh, I want to ask you this just finally, and you've only got 20 seconds to answer this, because uh, we always run out of time, it's so annoying. But um, do you think the Conservatives are going to beat Keir Starmer at the next election if it's 2024? All I'm saying is, I'd be very surprised if an 80-seat majority is overturned. It's oh, get out of it. That's cop-out, cop-out answer. Get him out of the kebab shop. Cop-out answer. Uh, Bill, Bill, thank you so much. Look.